Hi, Carol. I don't know if I uh, told you guys what was going on. So they think it has a burnt valve. Um, that's what I was told. They want me to diagnose it. So I'm scanning the car right now. See what codes we have. We'll start fresh on this unless I already did stuff. I can't remember. It's been sitting here for like a month. So let's do a report. About 117,966. Let's see. This fire cylinder four. Interesting. So we got. Let's see. Six feet. Let's see. Does this have a clear flood? So I guess it doesn't have clear flood. So we don't have clear flood because I had it to the floor. Let's see, is it misfiring? It doesn't feel like it's misfiring right now. Yes, airflow, intake air. Uh, Air fuel ratio looks good. It's low target air fuel ratio. I don't know what that times is. Sounds like it's doing a Subaru. That cylinder four is misfiring right now. Right there at that one spot. So, I guess we'll pull this over to the shop. Or actually, I guess we can take it for a ride, see what it does, because I haven't driven this yet. I'm going to take it for a ride. It's manual, so it might be a little difficult. Uh, let's drive and film at the same time, but we'll try it. They drove it here, so... Doesn't feel like a dead mist though. And it's not even logging misfires. While we're driving there, now we're in cruise, it's misfire. We're at like a steady cruise right here, kind of. So it's even worse now with the AC on. And it says open loop fault. And yeah, we can't even see our fuel trims. Like it's really rough. Look at this thing struggling to like idle. Let me turn the AC off. It got way worse. I'm actually thinking that we got a injector. Either injector or misfire. Like it's a... Um, I'm thinking it might actually be more... Uh, actually ignition coil. Because it seems... Like it doesn't sound feel violent while you're driving though, but at idle it's like for lower RPM you feel like bucket. You could also have like some kind of like vacuum leak or something. I'm gonna guys, so let's start this up. I cleared the codes. Okay, so we go right in the open loop. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I guess we'll set the lab scope up and we'll do a relative one. So, uh, doesn't look like anything was really changed here. That one doesn't look changed. Like, none of these look like they were touched. So, uh, I guess we can pull a coil out and see if it sparks. So, under four should be that one. Okay, guys, so I got the coil pulled out. There's, there's our spark, if you guys can see it or not. We got good spark. I didn't like the rust on the boot, but I don't see any marks of uh, burning through the boot. Like arcing through, but we definitely got a good. Definitely got that good. So I'm gonna get the lab scope out. We'll check the injector real quick, and then we'll unplug all the injectors into a relative. Let's cut the fire up. I just noticed that these wires are chewed through right here. Something was hungry in here. Look at that. That looks like it's for the purge valve. I'm assuming that's purge valve. Looks like a purge valve. They're chewed through right here. I wonder if they're chewed through anywhere else. Wouldn't that be exciting? I don't feel anything else damaged. Anything else like really looks damaged. We got that. Thing else looks intact though. Yeah, they must only got hungry there. So let's go to scope. Lab scope. Four channel. Um guess we'll do like a fifty volt scale. Or maybe 100 milliseconds. We'll set a trigger. And we should be able to see it. I hope. So we'll start this thing up. I don't think we have an in I don't think we have an injector fault. But this is run the same way as if that was. Yeah, there's our injector. But up here with the hood open, it definitely sounds like we might have a valve train issue. Yeah, look at that. You can see our pimple right there. So if we move over to the other one. There's our pimple. Go back over to the other one. Can move this over far enough. Get a hundred volt. You'll see our injector on time. Hopefully you guys can see this. Oh no, you guys can see this. There you go. Now you can make it out. There you go. You can see our pencil down here. Little hump. Right there, our pencil open, or closing. That'd be closing. So, I'm gonna shut this off and uh, this will do in cylinder when I get back. We got the Pico set up. No idea if it's uh, if the amp clamp's the right way. I got the amp clip around the battery terminal, so we're gonna quick unplug these injectors so that this car can't, well, shouldn't possibly be able to start. We'll find out. And we're gonna do a relative compression. Maybe if I can get all these off. It's weird though, because it it doesn't look like anybody uh anybody was part swapping. It doesn't look like new injectors, new coil or anything. So uh yeah, let's make sure this ain't gonna this ain't gonna fall. And we'll get in the car and we'll just crank it. I didn't do an ignition sink because I ain't too worried about it. Fours are misfiring cylinder. Oh, I left my wallet in here. Oh, you can hear the cylinders low. I could have swore that when we did this before, there was, it didn't sound like it was low. Oh, 
Why don't I remember that? Or maybe we couldn't do a relative. Oh, it didn't. It wasn't on the right way. Let's flip this around. There we go. Now it's on the right way. Let's try to do this again. See, I didn't want to set any more codes than what we had or do anything weird. That's why I didn't do it first. Oh, man, you can see that. No, wait. Cylinder low? Or is it high? Let's see, let's turn our... Oh, do we have two low cylinders? Interesting. Hmm. That's a very interesting pattern there. I'm going to get ignition sync. Which I didn't think we had to do. I'm going to save this capture. Okay, guys. Sorry, it's the next day. I had to stop recording last night. One, I got a phone call, and then I left my laptop die. So I got the amp clamp set back up. The amp clamp on. Pico set up. We're going to crank the car. Injectors are unhooked, and we got our green trays and our trigger for our ignition coil four. So I'm going to try cranking this. And like I said, hopefully the amp clamp's the right way. Ah. Um, what I think I'm going to do is, if we got this capture, oh, look at that. That is perfect. So look at that. You can see our bad cylinder. Let's see if we can increase our... So it looks like three and four are our lowest cylinder right there. So I think what I'm going to do, if three and four are the lowest one, I think what we can do is maybe I'll pull both spark plugs and maybe we'll pressurize the cylinder and just see if uh, it blows out the other cylinder. If it blows out the other cylinder, we've got a head gasket blown between two of them. Guys, there's something funky going on here. So I pulled the spark plug out. It's covered in fuel on the end, but like there's RTV all around the plug right here. And like neither plug was even like tight. I don't know. I don't know if there's RTV in the cylinder. I don't see any. See any on that one. I don't know if we can just go in there with the bore scope and look. We should just pressurize it first. I guess I'll just put pressure in there and see what happens. So guys, look at this. Putting the air in here. Crazy. I think we got a cylinder to cylinder leak. Okay guys, we're gonna move this other cylinder up at top dead center. There we go, I think we're at top dead center. Let's see what happens when we push this down. Drop everything. Look at that. It's still leaking. So if we uh so if we uh take all the air out of the finger right here, watch this. Let's get that on the finger. Look at that. Get all the air out of the finger. 
You can see it like inflate. It's not a lot. It's not a lot of pressure. But we got a cylinder, cylinder leak. You can hear it when I put my hand over it. My thumb in it. Cylinder to cylinder. Bad head gasket, guys. We ain't have to go in cylinder. So I hope you guys like it. See you later.